Michigan Gaming, everyone. I reckon this week is going to be filled with lots of love for a game that's been so highly anticipated and is so hot right now that everything is melting, metaphorically speaking, and in a good way. Like, when snow finally melts away in spring, but it's March, and you're like, yay, global warming. Okay, news. We have lots of it this week, so let's ride on in, partners. This week's main stories. Drake! I never thought I would begin a story with his name, he who started from the bottom and now he's here. Anyway, you might know him as the popular God's Plan rapper or as the dude who streamed once with Ninja. Well, as of this week, he became a co-owner of the esports organization 100 Thieves. He also invested some dollar signs into the company, though that figure isn't known yet. According to the press release, Drake, along with entertainment executive Scooter Braun, will help 100 Thieves diversify going forward. 100 Thieves founder Matthew Nadeshot Hogg said, Our top priority is to win world championships, but our ambitions go far beyond competitive gaming. With Drake and Scooter's support, we're going to build a lasting brand on the back of the content and apparel that our fans have come to love, aggressively expand into more games, scale our apparel business, and build a world-class management team. Now that's what I call good business. I'm excited to see what this means for the future of esports as more celebrities and big-time investors seem to be catching on that esports is kind of a big deal. I think it's smart for folks with money to have eyes on this, because ultimately that means gaming is being taken more seriously, and I think we could always use more of that. We've come a long way from the dark basement dweller days. What do you guys think of this trend of everyone outside of gaming buying into it? Let me know in the comments. I want to hear your stuff. I want to hear all you guys think about this show. All right, look, I really appreciate you peeling your eyeballs away from Red Dead Redemption 2 to watch my show today. Like, seriously, thank you. I get you could be doing something better right now. I get it. So as a gift for watching, I thought I'd let you know that Rockstar wants to revive the Wii U and Smart Glass with sequel prequel. Remember those things? It's okay if you don't. You see, Red Dead Redemption 2 has a companion app that lets you look at the game's map and even remove the HUD and just have it on your smartphone or tablet. Now it sounds cool, but I think we've learned nobody ever really utilizes those second screen abilities in the past. Well, unless it was, you know, with a DS or 3DS, I have just never used those features, okay? Have you guys? I actually want to know. But I guess if one console game could get people on board with that, it would be Red Dead Redemption 2. I mean, at the time of this recording, the game is sitting with a 97 Metacritic rating on PS4 and 98 on Xbox. If I know math, and I think I do, those review numbers are pretty, pretty high. So looks like Red Dead Redemption 2 is living up to the hype. That said, I'm excited to hear what you all think after playing, so definitely share your thoughts in the comments. I got to play a bit in NY last month and it blew my mind. And I won't be playing it like most of you this weekend. Hopefully tonight, if I have a chance. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing a trip in Canada this weekend, so I'm so jelly of all of you who get to actually have a sit down this weekend full day's time off to play the game. That said, we might have to skip next week's show. I'm preemptively warning you, I'm planning a lot of couch time next week. So, just a heads up. <laughs> Kevin the Cube has rolled and floated across Fortnite's map and now he's unleashing cube monsters in a limited time event called Fort Nightmares. I love that. Yep, PvE has arrived in the Battle Royale game as you can take on cube fiends and brutes, as well as, you know, other players, tryhards and potatoes. Fort Nightmares will also let you get your hands back on the crossbow, by the way. Pretty tubular, right? Or should I say cubular? Anywho, that's not the only big changeup that's arrived. You can now redeploy your glider when you're three stories high or even farther up. Take that fall damage. You won't eliminate me no more. At least I hope not. Speaking of Battle Royale games, Battlefield 5's take on the popular multiplayer mode won't arrive until springtime or autumn for my friends down under. Here's what DICE had to say on the Battlefield website. During spring, DICE and Criterion start the fire with Battlefield 5's Battle Royale experience. Firestorm elevates the mode by bringing in the best of what Battlefield is known for, mix a shrinking playing field with trademark Battlefield elements such as team play, powerful vehicles, and destruction, and you get many unique Battlefield moments coming your way. It seems a bit concerning that Firestorm is still months away, especially since Black Ops 4 has seen such a strong start with Blackout, but maybe more time in the oven will pay off for Firestorm. We'll have to 
find out what happens with that. All right, last month we chatted about how Marvel's Spider-Man was the fastest selling PlayStation exclusive ever, and now we know the Webheads game has topped the US game charts for September, according to NPD. I bet Sony's Spider-Sense was tingling, if you know what I mean. I actually don't know what I mean, so let's just stop thinking about that. Back to the charts, NBA 2K19 was the second best selling game, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey is at number three. Surprising. Other notable entries to the list include Shadow of the Tomb Raider at number 5, Forza Horizon 4 at 7, Super Mario Party at 9. Looks like Waluigi still has it, my friends. Side note, did anyone play the Black Cat DLC yet? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to be doing a Black Cat costume for Halloween this year, and I'll have you know the costume I'm putting together is looking me out. <laughs> okay. Now, Spider-Man isn't the only PS4 exclusive that sucked up hours of our time this year. There was also God of War, and Sony Santa Monica has released a hilarious video called Midgod Mishaps that showcases some of the funniest bugs that popped up during development for the Epic game. I especially love the one where Atreus is just sprinting around an enemy like he's the Flash. Keep in mind, by the way, that there are spoilers within the video, so beware. Also, shout out to Corey Barlog, writer of the game, at the start of the video there. Yeah, what's up, dude? Do you have $8,000 just lying around and taking up space? <laughs> yeah, me neither. That sounds ridiculous to me, but apparently not for Capcom Japan. That's because Eurogamer reports Capcom Japan is selling a Devil May Cry 5 Ultra Limited Edition for 900,000 yen, which is roughly 8,000 buckaroos here in the good old USA. Throwing down that much cash will get you Dante's coat, or if you're looking for a deal, heavy air quotes here, you could grab the edition with V's coat that only costs more than $5,000. What a steal. Or you could just, you know, buy the regular old game, keep yourself warm in a blanket. That would save you like a couple hundred bucks and keep you much warmer. Plus blanket forts, come on. Xbox Game Pass is apparently heading to PC, but you don't have to take my word for it. Windows Central reports Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella made the announcement during an earnings call, so it's coming from the big man. I'd say that's pretty legit. And if you're unfamiliar, Xbox Game Pass is this cool subscription service where you get access to over 100 games for 100 bucks a month. So similar to Netflix in a way, but with games. Plus, all Microsoft first-party games show up on the service when they launch, like the recently released Forza Horizon 4. Before I go, I asked last week if any of you got that Stanley Parable achievement that takes five years to get, which is insane. But apparently, Nightling Gaming got it, though I don't have proof. And a lot of you said you are one year away, so that's pretty cool. A lot of you also think it's totally worth it, which is interesting. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yes, if you did like the show, please show it with a sub, a like, or a comment. See you all next week and hope to see you back here, even though likely you'll all be knee deep in RDR2, which again, I totally get. All right, it's okay. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.